Hello, this is Dami and this is Ask Dami. This is the place where you receive practical answers to life's complex questions and it's the seventh episode. Now today's episode is really different because I want to address something quite sensitive. It's made the headlines, it's been out there for the last six days, going on seven days and there's so much, there's been so much tension, so many reactions, so many responses, and a whole lot of emotions have been vented, have been uh, released, have been contained. There have been implosions and explosions in different regards. It's something that I think we need to address. Now, last week in the city of London, that thing happened, an event that nobody thought was going to take place. Now, London is known for many things. It's known for its prehistoric grandeur. It's known for its conservative uh, demonor. It's known for its civility, its sense of civilization. It's known for its relative prosperity, its relative stability, its relative serenity. London is known for its tourism potential. We know about the London Bridge and the Big Ben and the London Eye and royalty and nobility and all of that and when we think about London we don't think about violence we don't think about savagery we don't think about attacks we don't think about the kind of unfortunate incident that we witnessed last week Wednesday the 22nd of May 2013 you may have heard about it if many of you are exposed enough to be watching the screencast or listening to this recording, then you may have heard that last week Wednesday, a gentleman was brutally murdered. Now, by all standards, regardless of what the mot motive could have been, what the motivation could have been, that was heartless, that was barbaric, that was uncommonly, that was wicked, to say the least. And I know that the people who share my 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 sentiments, the people who've been deeply touched, like I have been, by that unfortunate incident, and many people have expressed different thoughts and emotions. And my idea with this screencast is not necessarily to throw for you the <laughs> the director's cut or the news behind the news, or to offer you something you've never heard before, even though you might stumble on one or two things that you've not never heard before. But it is because a lot of people have asked me, what do you think about it? They've sent me messages, they've asked me in person. And the tendency for us as human beings is to react. When something happens, we react intuitively or instinctively. We lash out, we uh, speak our minds, as we like to put it. We talk about what has happened and we roll it over and over again in our conversations. And there is nothing wrong with that because that could be helpful in our healing process. When we are hurting, we tend to talk, uh, we tend to dispel the shock by rubbing minds with people who are feeling the way we are feeling or whom we think are feeling the way we are feeling. But my concern today is not necessarily about the religious angle to what happened or the political implications of what happened or even the socioeconomic uh, implications, the background factors. My concern is that long after the analysis have been made, long after the investigations have been concluded, and long after the interrogations have produced more facts, long after the bouquet of flowers stopped rushing in to Woolwich in southeast London, we would have to look back and see if we could draw some lessons from that unfortunate incident. Uh, I've prayed at different times and I'm still praying that the family of Lee Rigby will somehow find the faith and the fortitude to press through these difficult times and through these trying moments. Um, particularly stand in prayer for his son, his two-year-old son, that God will keep, protect, safeguard and cause him to grow um, into a decent vibrant, energetic young man who will make the world a much better place than what it was when he 
was two years old. That's my prayer for him. And that's my prayer for all his friends and all his family members that God himself will comfort and console them in these trying times. But long after this season, we would have to look back and say, what did we learn and what, what were we able to do? And that's why today's episode, I've tagged it Wisdom from Woolwich. Wisdom from Woolwich. Wisdom from Woolwich. Well, what, is, what is it that we can learn? Is there anything at all that we might be able to learn from this angle? I, I believe that if Lee Rigby were still alive, he perhaps might want us to pick something out of this unfortunate incident. What, what is it that we could learn from this Woolwich savagery, if you will? A couple of things, I believe. And one of the first things that we could learn from this event is that life is a privilege. Life is a privilege. Every morning when you wake up and you can stretch and yawn and get out of your bed and rush to work or stay indoors doing whatever you do on a daily basis, remember that life is a privilege. Yeah, every day is a gift. Every day that you're able to breathe, you're able to to stand, you're able to walk around, regardless of how tired you might be, how frustrated you might feel, and how much money you still need, the fact that you're alive, that you can breathe, that you can move around, is, is a huge privilege. And that's important to note. The second thing is that life is not entirely predictable. I know that people die every day, and many times people die under um, strange circumstances, and sometimes under uncomely circumstances and sometimes under unlikely circumstances but life is not entirely predictable no matter how, how great a planner you are in terms of getting a grip on your work schedule and having your daily plan and working with your organizer and having a personal assistant or an executive assistant or a team of workers that program your different activities and log you in and log you out life is not entirely predictable. Sometimes your best laid out plans will be flawed by an event, by a circumstance, by a situation. Number three is the life is temporary because life is not predictable. Yeah, at some point people die. At some point we will die. At some point everybody who is born will breathe his or her last. Now, I'm not trying to overwhelm you with a sense of morbidity or <laughs> scare you. No, not at all. I'm just trying to expand and extrapolate certain vital truths that we all have to face up to at different times in our lives. And life is temporary. And number four, life can be positively or negatively altered by just one decision. Sometimes your decision is far more reaching than you could ever imagine. Who could have imagined that the decision of that young man who, with a knife and a meat cleaver, jumped out with a friend of his could alter the activities of an entire city who could have imagined that that decision to take the life of somebody an innocent man could have a ripple effect who could have who could have imagined that it would tell on a two-year-old boy who could have imagined that he would watch his wife weeping and wailing on television with many of us joining her in her tears and while she might say, well, I've not decided to hurt anybody or to kill anybody, I would like you to pay closer attention to the decisions that you make on a daily basis. From the boardroom to the bedroom, from the classroom to the cloakroom, the decisions that you're making is either making life easier or making life more difficult. It's either making your own life easier or making your own life more difficult. Ultimately, the quality of your life is going to be predicated on the quality of your decisions. So if you wonder what I think about what happened in Woolwich, I have many questions that have not been answered. I have questions as well. I know this is Ask Danny, and, and you might get the idea that I have all the answers, but that's not accurate. I still, have, I still have questions as well, but take these four things. Life is a privilege. It's not entirely predictable. It's temporary and it can be positively or negatively altered by just one decision. Now, it's important to know this, that a decision you make within three minutes can change your life for three decades. A decision you make within just three minutes has the power and the potential 
to change your life for the next three decades. Now, those are four basic things I want us to take from, from Woolwich. But having said that, I would like to ask, do you have a plan for, for life beyond here, beyond your experience on Earth? Do you understand that one day you're going to breathe your last and it might be whilst you're asleep, it might be, I don't know, anyhow. But have you made a, a concrete decision? Have you made a plan on what happens after here? I know there are all sorts of philosophies and thoughts and ideas out there about how, you know, when people die, they die and nothing happens after here. There is no life beyond here. But I am fully persuaded that every human being will have life somewhere after here. And some will have it in heaven and some will have it in hell. And you might have a lot of questions along those lines if you have questions please leave a comment in the comment box below but i would like you to realize that the bible says that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in that son should not perish but have everlasting life how does that work it works this way every man is born flawed every man is born sinful every man is born immoral every man is born fallen every man is born on his way to destruction on his way to hell every man is born without a sense of spiritual security but God in his goodness and God in his mercy and God in his love and God in his faithfulness said you know what I, I don't want men to perish I don't want men to go to hell I don't want them to burn in, in a place where there is darkness and delusion and confusion and anger and bitterness and everything that is not God. I want them to be with me in my home and my heaven called heaven. I want man, regardless of his background, his race, his color, his creed, his psyche, his thought patterns, his background, his history. I want man, as long as his blood is red, to spend eternity with me. And so what God did was he divested himself of his superior paraphernalia of grandeur and glory and he wrapped himself in human flesh and hid himself in the belly of a virgin woman called Mary. And after nine months, he popped out and grew up as a human being and offered himself as a sacrifice on the cross. Why did he offer himself as a sacrifice on the cross? Because the Bible says, cast his hero ranks on the tree. In other words, all of us deserve to die on the tree. In Bible times, people who died on the tree or on the cross were criminals. They were the people that had been cast out by society, rejected because of the weight of sin and atrocity. They deserve to die. And we all deserve to die. You might say, well, I've never killed anybody before. So why do I deserve to die? But have you ever had a murderous thought in your heart have you ever had a lustful thought in your mind have you ever wished somebody dead have you ever told a lie have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you have you ever cursed somebody in your heart if you have if you can say yes to at least one of those questions then you're in dire and desperate need of a savior but the good news is god doesn't want you to be perfect before he saves you in fact he doesn't want perfect people. He wants people that he can perfect by his grace, his goodness, and his love. This might not make any sense to you at all. It might sound like the rambling of a silly preacher or somebody who's overwhelmed or drunk on the bad news we heard last week. But this might just resonate with you and, and you might want to say, well, I'm not even sure if there's heaven or hell after, after here, but I don't want to take chances. I'm not even sure if there is a if there is an eternity, but I, I want to make a decision because Dami told me a few moments ago that life can be positively or negatively altered by just one decision. And if you're with me along those lines, if, if this resonates somewhere in your heart, I just want you to say a simple prayer with me and say, Lord God, I thank you because you love me. I thank you because you died for me and I thank you because you gave your life for me today I confess Jesus Christ your son as my Lord and my Savior 
I accept the gift of salvation. I receive the gift of your life. Make me new. Write my name in the book of life and cause me to grow in love, in favor, in grace, and in faith. So I'll become more like you with each passing day. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, that perhaps could be the greatest decision you have ever made in your life. Now, let me tell you this. I said this prayer. <laughs> I said this prayer 20 years ago, going on 21 years. I'm not that old. <laughs> but I was privileged to say the prayer when I was a, a little boy. And it's been the, the best thing that's happened to me. It's safeguarded me from wrong decisions. It's safeguarded me from wrong associations. And I can tell you I have no regrets whatsoever. And I want to help you on your journey. If you said the prayer, do ensure that you leave a comment in the comment box and said, I said the prayer. Or you can send uh, me a message on social media, uh, on Twitter, you know, on Daniel Law Online. You can follow me on Twitter or on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Daniel Or on YouTube, you can look through some video clips that I've shot at different events in the past. I want to help you on this journey. Now, do me a favor, share this link with your friends, your loved ones, or the people around you that you believe need to say this prayer. And if you've said it before, all well and good. Let's spread the love. Let's spread the joy. And this is Wisdom from Woolwich on AskDami.com. I look forward to answering more of your questions as we go along and learn from one another. And God grants us the grace to become more like Him in all that we do. Thank you so much for listening to this screencast. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.